Flash games. Fun, nostalgic, colorful. On this channel, I've covered Batman and Spider-Man. So now I'm gonna cover Wolverine. Wolverine with his mutant ability, the claws, the indestructible body, and the healing factor can sure be utilized in the game. As we see with console games like X-Men Origins Wolverine, it was one of the best superhero games even by today's standard. Today we're gonna take a look at Wolverine Flash games, spanning from the year 2000 to 2013, from cartoon-based, unofficial games, and movie-based games. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more nostalgic videos like this one. And now we're gonna start with Wolverine Search and Destroy used to promote the Wolverine and the X-Men animated series. This is a top-down beat-em-up where you fight Magneto's robots consists of 6 levels. Pressing space bar initiates the normal claw attack. You can also unlock special combo attacks with some cool animations by collecting duck tags. To use these combos, press either Z, X, C, V, or B. Duck tags are also used to unlock doors to get to the next level. Maybe it's just me, but I found this game to be more difficult than the Spider-Man and Batman Flash games I've covered on this channel before. One of the reasons are there are no checkpoints. This is a recurring theme in the games based on Wolverine and the X-Men series. So if you die, you're spawned back to the beginning. It doesn't matter how far you went in the level, you lost all your progress you've made on the level. That includes dark tanks and special combos you've acquired. Level 4 takes place in Magneto's prison. Progress far enough in the level, you'll fight Magneto in a boss fight, but then he'll escape. Robots on the next level get stronger and carries a bigger variety of weapons that will deal more damage to Wolverine. And there's a lot more backtracking, as the map becomes more like a maze. The dog tanks are now more spread out throughout the map. In the final level, you will fight Magneto one more time, just like in level 4. It's pretty much the same boss fight, but now Magneto's health are a lot bigger. Also, he has more attack varieties. After this boss fight, the game is completed. So overall, in my opinion, this game is quite tricky. Sometimes you really have to save your health and avoid encounters with enemies. At the same time, you can also use them as an advantage. There is a lot of strategizing involved. So, let's move on to the next game, which is also based on Wolverine and the X-Men series. Wolverine MRD Escape So this game is a more traditional side-scroller, a little less focused on the action and more into puzzle solving. This has pretty much the same music, animation, and Wolverine character model as Search and Destroy. The difference are the perspective, the enemy type, the additional movement of sticking to ceiling and crawling down, and the gameplay focusing more on tactical stealth. The objective of this game is to escape this facility using computers, keypads, and cable cutting. The game has 10 levels, and like before, there are no checkpoints. If you die, you're back from the start of the level. In my opinion, this game is kinda unique. As most side-scroller flash games were mostly action-oriented, and this one relies on memory and strategy. You can tell this is not an action game by just looking at the enemy robots. They just move around really slowly and don't attack you until you are spotted. There is a lot of backtracking involved to find the right codes and cables to cut. Sometimes I get lost in the levels. You also have to find your way around to avoid encounters and not get spotted by enemies along the way. Level 7 is a maze door, where you have to pick the right doors to get to the exit. And that's pretty much the game. There's no major boss levels. So let's move on to the next game. Wolverine Bike Ride from Games Butler. Is it just me or this Butler logo looks like our Rubens from Peewee? Anyway, same with Batman and Spider-Man before this. With Flash games, you gotta have bike trailer games for every character. But with Wolverine, it's more accurate. As Wolverine rides a motorcycle in the comics and the film every now and then, you have two character options, Wolverine and Jean Grey. In the game, there's an opponent bike right beside you. You compete with this driver, get past him is pretty easy. You just have to collect nitro bars, place in the beginning of the level, which will boost your motorcycle. The background are just basic PNG background assets, so there's not much to this game. Coins with rotating claws are just there as point numbers. And there's a star rating at the end of the level. But I always get 2 stars in every level. So nothing really determines it. Let's get into the next game. Wolverine Snowboard, another unofficial game. This time it's snowboarding. This was kinda bad. The movement and animations, if you can call it that. Actually, there are no movements at all. Wolverine just stands still. And when you hit an object, he just fell in a split position like a doll. 
control uses mouse drag for movement. What's really bad is you can't choose when to move or not. It could have just made it so when you click it moves. But here, when it's not clicking, the mouse will always make you move. It often feels like a first person aiming with low sensitivity, where you always run out of space on the mouse pad. Very clunky, but decent enough if you just want to pass the time. Wolverine The Last Stand Despite the name, this game was not based on the X-Men The Last Stand movie. It's an unofficial game developed by Game Sumo. It is an arcade-style beat-em-up game, like Double Dragon. The art style looks decent, but throughout the game there are repeating backgrounds, so it felt like going around and around in the same factory location three times. Combat are the normal claws, kick, duck, and special powers. The special power bars are filled by collecting foods dropped by enemies. I'm not kidding. Look, they dropped their lunches after being defeated. Enemies also dropped money, which is used to purchase upgrades for punch, health, or resist. This is the sound Wolverine makes when he's attacking. At first, it might seem like the enemies were endless, but this game consists of 9 minion levels and 3 boss fights. Each three levels had small enemy varieties. The guy in hazmat, the spent and locking person, and Jason Voorhees. Three boss fights feature X-Men villains Blob, Juggernaut, and the Magneto. Blob's primary attack is his belly and punch. Juggernaut smashes you with his hands, and Magneto spawns a vault and a metal slime. I found the boss pretty easy to defeat, as you just have to jump around them while attacking and avoiding their attacks. I got really lucky in the end with Magneto. As my attack just automatically blocks his attack. His death animation is pretty dope. Wolverine Slice and Dice An overly simple game. We just point and click on circles in a first person perspective. The objectives are the red circles, represented by the villain characters like Domino, Blob, and Steve. If you hit the blue circles, the points will decrease, as the blue circle represents the ally characters. Holding the claws will drain a power bar which is also the objective of this game. Get the power bar to 100% before the time runs out and you pass the level. The next levels are the same, but the circle gets faster, so you have to be more precise than the previous levels. It's a simple game, but there's not much to it, so let's move on. Sentinel Slash Another one based off of Wolverine and the X-Men cartoon. It's an arcade style beat em up game. But here is an endless survival, like all of the zombies. There are two types of sentinel robots. The first one is the usual standing one, and the other is jetpack users that float in the air. So this game goes on until your health bar is depleted. Controls consist of regular movements, down arrow to block, and spacebar for the claw tank. This has better animation and art style compared to the last stand, which has similar gameplay, which was expected from an officially published game. Overall, it was fun, kind of repetitive, as there are little enemy varieties and only one level, but it's still fun. X-Men Origins Time Warrior This one may have the most unique concept out of all the games. So the game recreates the opening scene of the movie, where Logan and Sabretooth fight in wars throughout time. In the game, we are fighting in three war periods. That is the American Civil War, World War I, and the Vietnam War. Gameplay is a top-down shooter. Logan's health indicator is the yellow circle on the ground. When Logan gets close to the enemies, he uses the claws for melee. Now I'm gonna show you the gameplay without my commentary, so you can see and hear how good the game is.
And now we get to the Wolverine 2013 movie. There are three standout games that I remember, two of which are really good. The first one being Tokyo Infiltration. First of all, this mini art feels really off. Hugh Jackman's face is plastered on someone else's body. Kinda reminds me of Big Hat Mod from Arkham City. So this game is a strategic stealth game, akin to Metal Gear or Hitman. And we will see a repeating objective in the Wolverine movie games. As you go through these levels and enemies to save Mariko, Logan's Japanese love interest in the movie. In this game, you infiltrate the facilities of Yakuza in the shape of mazes, which must be navigated through while not getting spotted by the enemies. The things that can spot you are CCTV cameras, guards, and lasers. With the CCTV cameras viewers being shown, but the guards weren't, so you have to measure the eye view yourself. The objective of each level is the exit door. To unlock the exit door, you must collect key cards around the levels. As you progress through, the maze becomes more complex, and the lasers will go on and off. So we gotta plan and strategize better to the level. Tokyo Rail Rush. If you just glimpse at this game, you'll know that it's basically Wolverine Subway Server, based on the train scene from the movie. But this game is not as flashy or visually pleasing. This game takes place at night time. Instead of the time like in the movie, you can use Wolverine's claws by pressing spacebar. Wolverine runs through a railroad opposite of the train tracks, so the trains will run towards you. Let me spawn at random above the train. Get hit once and that's it, you'll restart from the beginning. So just be ready for enemies coming. Enemies aren't the only thing that can kill you. Rushing into the front of a train or the station platforms will do that too. So I think this game is just kinda meh. Compared to the other two, especially this next one, which I think might be the best one. Tokyo Fury. Just look at it. It has great art style, animations, and music. This is an action side scroller. Unlike MRD or Search and Destroy, this one focuses more on the action. The story objective is, again, to save Mariko. There are 15 levels. As Wolverine, you fight your way through the roofs of Tokyo, occupied by Yakuza and ninjas. There are a decent amount of enemy varieties that you have to defeat or get past to avoid combat. Platforming here also requires some tricks, as this is the most advanced platforming in the Flash games ever. So Wolverine can jump and bounce off walls left and right, and slides down while running. The movement animation is really cool, and the combat is very simple, complemented by the amount of enemy types. So the combat can be utilized in different ways, depending on the situation. You can also block enemy attacks by pressing up. Time it right and we can get this badass counter animation straight out of the movies. Okay, that's it. 9 games. And there are other games, which links I'll put in the description to try these games out yourself. I'd sure like to hype myself for Deadpool 3 by playing these Wolverine oldies. I would recommend using the Y8 browser and Flashpoint archive. Thank you for watching as always. See you in the next video.